Okay, everybody. Hey, Dylan Borland here. I am with Mr. Fahad. Fahad, what's happening, man? Hello, hello, Dylan. I think oh. we're live. Let me double check here. Yeah. It looks like, does it look like we're live on your end? Well, it says recording, man. It does so say recording. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fahad, welcome, man. Hey, appreciate you taking the time out of your day to hang out and chat with me. No problem, man. Thanks for having so, me. Appreciate your it. goal is, you know, we want to try to hopefully provide some value for the listeners and mm -hmm. uh, outside of entertainment value, right? Because <laughs> we certainly provide entertainment value. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to- I don't know if I can provide any other value, so. <laughs> that's right, that's right. No, we want to hear a little bit about, you've been involved in you know, the mm -hmm. ultimate real estate investing. You've been involved mm -hmm. with me in various fashions in our business as well too. Yeah. And I remember having first met you, you know, kind of where you came from and where you went and you have a very unique story. Sure. Kind of dabbled in in a lot of different aspects of real estate investing. I think you can add a nice, unique perspective to a lot of the listeners and a lot of our students and potential students. Right. Um, so I just wanted to bring you on and kind of tell us a little bit about your experience, you know, that you've had. I really would love for them to hear about your story because your story is very unique. You started originally going to medical school and I'll let you tell it. Okay. And then you said, you know, this medical school is kind of whack. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, long, long story short, man. Um, yeah. yeah I, I come from the medical field and, um, you look very much like a doctor right now, by the way. Oh, okay. There you go. There's no white coat though. I got you have the swag. You have the swag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, I come from the medical field and I yeah. got that little bit. And then, uh, I actually had a master's as well in health administration. So, uh, I got into that as well and I kind of got to experience both, both sides of, uh, you know, healthcare, the actual political side and the administrative side. And yeah, it was interesting um, for me, you know, I'm always kind of this quest to learn and figure out like, I mean, stuff like I get bored very easily. So yeah. I, I like that too, Dylan. So um, for me, it was like, you know, I've always kind of been interested in real estate. And I knew that, you know, after medicine, that was definitely something I was going to get into. I didn't know in what capacity. But um, my parents, like my, uh, my earliest experience with real estate was that, you know, my parents, uh, my father actually bought uh, a couple rental properties like back even before I was born and he just kind of held on to them. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, when I was 14, my, my father passed away. And so my mother being a single earner, she was a teacher, you know, you don't, you don't bring in that much. So really those rental property income, that passive income is what got me oh, cool. to college. So uh, you know, and expenses and things like that. You know? So, uh, so I really understood the the power of real estate and passive income, residual income. You know, is uh, I, I got to see it firsthand, and I and I definitely thought that hey, you know, that's something that I eventually want to do. Now, in the course of medicine, um, you know, the more I got into it, the more um, you know, I I don't want to say that you know, you have to look at things in its totality. You know? Right. It is a fantastic field, but you know, if you look at it from a financial perspective only you know, and as far as maybe what your personal goals are, a lot of things don't add up, you know, uh, sure. your medical debt, and then, you know, for example, your, your, your salary, you know, so your taxes, I mean, yeah, doctors make, you know, doctors make a lot of money, quote unquote, but they don't, people don't take into account their debt service, you know, for medical school, and then right. they don't take into account, uh, you know, the taxes that they have to pay. So really they're not, you know, they're doing all right. They're doing, they're doing okay. But what, what interested me about, you know, real estate at that point was, you know, kind of learning about the different tax structures and, and uh, you know, how the government actually rewards you for, you know, getting into real estate and having your own property. Yeah. Um, so that's when, I, you know, it was a bit risky, you know, uh, any kind of change, I guess, maybe in my mind, it was a little risky, you know, so I just, I decided to, um, you know, go ahead and kind of take the plunge and switch over and see, you know, what kind of, what I could do with real estate. And that's when actually, uh, I saw you online. I moved to Michigan a couple of years ago, and then that's when I, I just happened to see you know you online. And then uh, I think I just showed up to your door one day and, and I kind of asked about your coaching. <laughs> that's that's you know? pretty much how it went, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're like, who who is this guy? I'm like, you got to take care of you know, man. That's, that's right. Yeah, I thought you were asking for food, but then I realized <laughs> <laughs> then I realized you know you actually had an interest in real estate. No. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Fahad, that's actually a pretty unique story, man. So you've got, you got your, you know, you really kind of learned about the benefits of what real estate can do for, for your family, like from an early age from your father. Absolutely. Which is awesome. I don't know if I knew that or not about you. So now, yeah, I, man. 
<clears throat> so, um, so yeah, so I, you know, and you know, having been done, excuse me, having been done um, you know, all those years of education and kind of getting into it, I, I knew that, you know, when I wanted to get into real estate, you know, there's two components because you know, there's always a, there's always a learning curve anytime you really get into something, you know, if you're right. being, being honest with yourself and everybody, if you're being honest with yourself, you know, just because um, you know, a, lot, a lot of times in life, people think that if they're necessarily educated or good at one thing that they're, you know, educated, they know everything about everything else. So I knew pretty early, like, hey, I'm not going to pretend like I know how to do this. I'm yeah. going to try to latch on and learn from someone who's very successful in that business so that, you know, that saves time, that saves money. You know, let me learn from, you know, your failures, basically, you know, and you're actually all, all those years that you did that you, you know, where in real estate, I could pretty much, I was like, let me harness, let me leverage all that, all that experience and knowledge and, you know, have you teach me or mentor me and that I can use my goals faster. So that's what I was thinking. You know, that, I'm actually really happy that you brought that up because that's something that I did and changed my life dramatically. You know, I, I was selling, and you know this, I was selling real estate as an agent yeah, and doing four houses a year and thought I was on top of the world, right? Because yeah. to be in the top 1% of real estate agents, right. You had right. to sell four houses. Hey, baby, I made it. And that's here in Detroit. I mean, <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not even yeah. like house is a million dollars. Each house, you know, here probably was whatever, like, you know, 70,000. Right. That's who knows, you know? Right. So I was making a whopping like $5,000 a year. It was incredible. Yeah. But, but I did, you know, and I had that very similar mindset. I'm very happy that you brought that up because I, I found an individual and it was the Mike Ferry organization actually yeah. taught me everything yeah. I knew. And you, you're familiar with that. Yeah. And I latched onto them. And I remember my coach telling me like, Dylan, listen, like, don't try to figure this out. Literally like just follow the path exactly. of people that are doing it and doing a hundred deals a year and at yeah. least get there and yeah. throw everything you think, you know, out the window. Cause your, your fastest right. path to success is okay. This guy's already done it. He knows how to do it. Just freaking yeah. follow yeah. what they tell you to do. Yeah. And, and then like, then when you get to a hundred deals a year, then if you want to get creative, get creative. Right. Yeah. And yeah. So I think that's very smart. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, uh, Fahad, that, you know, they go out there. I, I, I see it in our course all the time. I see students go out there and like, they're looking for this magic pill. They're looking for this thing that like, you know, I don't have to do any work. Right. Or like, you know, like they'll, they'll take the course. And that's why I tell people so much in the course, you got to follow it a hundred percent, not 99%. And I want right. to get into that because you followed it a hundred percent. And I want to hear about, you know, your results doing that. Mm -hmm. But I just don't understand like, like people get into it and, and then they want to kind of make it their own. Like, yeah, yeah, here's a great system that's working, but let me put my spin on it. And that's when it gets screwed up. Yeah. Right? And uh, it's, it's interesting you bring that up, Dylan, because I think it kind of comes back to human nature. And I know like, Times, you know, and I can kind of relate this to like, you know, like my days of studying, like people tend to study what you're already comfortable with and what you're good at yeah. so, because it's easier, you know, and you don't tend to, at least me, like I would, you know, I'd kind of avoid the stuff that, you know, is harder and the stuff that's going to challenge me. And then that would, what would be the end result? You know, I would just do average, you know, I wouldn't do yeah. better than, you know, so in the same way, I, I learned from that experience and I was like, listen, uh, I, there's a lot of gaps here and even though it may cause like people may argue that you know you, you need to you know, pay for coaching or whatever some up, up from cost but don't forget like you're trying to start you know your own business you know real estate really is your own business and and the beauty of real estate is come on man if you're trying to buy a mcdonald's if you're trying to buy a gas station i can't think yeah. of a business where you can pretty much go in i mean there's some upfront cost but like what maybe five six thousand dollars maximum that to me is very low risk if you compare it starting any other business. Yeah, go on and start a McDonald's. You need like a million dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and, and they say, what, 80% of businesses fail like in the yeah. first three years or something like that. So um, to me, it's like, okay, there's a certain amount of money that you, know, uh, you could possibly lose. But if you're trying to get into this field, I feel like that's not much. And that kind of includes the cost of um, you know, the coaching as well. So I was like, listen, let me save some money aside here and uh, you know, put my 100% into it. You know, and yeah. if it's, if it's, you know, and, I, and I'll, you know, I'll put it to the test. I'm going to do whatever, you know, like you, like your program is Like you didn't even technically have that program, you know, when I started, but I was like, I'm just going to listen to whatever Dylan says, like hundred percent. And then I'm going to hold him accountable, actually. You know, yeah. you know, that, that's kind of like coaching, you know, you always yeah. that's everybody. awesome, actually. Yeah. So it's kind of like, if I'm doing hundred percent of my thing and I'm not making money, then, uh, uh, you have, you know, you have some questions to answer, you know, right. so I felt like that. So. Yeah. 
So tell us a little bit about that then. So I know that, you know, you started, you started for those of the viewers out there who don't know you, you started in residential and then you went into a little bit of commercial side of things as well too. You kind of graduated to that space, but yeah. let's start with your residential journey, right? So, okay. so, so jumping in, following the system. And at that time, you know, we, we didn't have the course, but we had the unofficial course because yeah. everything that you followed was right. literally a system that exactly. we just downloaded into the course, right? step by step. So uh, the same thing that we use with our one-on-one -on -one clients. So tell us a yeah. little bit about that. Okay, so um, so just to kind of give people um, kind of a respect of time, uh, I got into real estate. This is July 2017, so it's pretty recent if you think about it. Like that, yeah. in case people are thinking, you know, hey, is it too late for me in life, or is it, you know, well, am I over the hill? No, it's never too late, and you can learn very quickly if you're right. That who knows what they're doing. So, um, you know, I remember that first time, uh, you know, I, I walked in and had that meeting with you. Um, you kind of you told me a little bit about. Uh, you know, my goals, you asked me about my goals. And then, you know, I remember you, you, you told me like, you know, I, I was interested in wholesaling at that time. Yeah. You know? I think you had just stopped uh, fix and flipping. You were going through that transition period to, into multifamily. So, um, you know, you were, you were just asking me like, how many goals do you want? I mean, how many deals do you want? How, like, what are your income goals? And I was kind of like, how does this guy, like, how can you come to a conclusion of how much money I'll make? This is business. I always thought you can't really come to a, you know, fine number because everything's up in the air. But then, you were kind of like, well, you got to go your, with your goals, start with your goals and then, and then work backwards. Right. You know? And then, so, and then when you said that, you were like, well, you know, do you want like, you know, two checks, like this much money, do you want four checks? And I was like, this guy, man, like, <laughs> well, you know, and then I remember you got up right there and you showed me, you physically showed me like checks, you know? And then yeah. and I was like, yeah, you know, like I, stacks of them on the floor. Yeah, was that like stacks of them at the floor? Yeah, the floor. yeah, you know, it's just like, yeah. and I remember I was in the, you know, there's something about that because you know, when you're starting, like, I'm still new enough that I remember, like, you have that in your mind, like, is this real? Is right. this, you know, is this like some kind of fairy tale? Like, what do you mean <laughs> when you're getting checks and stuff? And not to say that, you know, there's not work involved, but you know, when you actually see a check, it does bring, like, oh, wow, like, this is real. This guy, you know, he's so, um, so then, you know, we, we you know, we had a, you know, we worked our, our deal out and then I, you know, you suggested I, you know, follow this is, which was the Mike Ferry system. I'd never heard of Mike Ferry before. And you, always, you know, you talked about them and basically I realized like maybe two months into it that, Hey, I'm just following Dylan is teaching me the Mike Ferry system. I think you yeah. gave these a couple of weeks later and then I just kind of started following it. And um, yeah. And then it just seemed to, it seemed to work. You know, I was like, it worked pretty quickly too. I think I started in July and I think, uh, in the middle of July, and then I think I saw my first check, I think was like uh, either middle or like end of September. So that's pretty fast for like not knowing anything about yeah. real estate at all, you know? Yeah. So just to clarify, the Mike Ferry system, they teach real estate agents how to, how to perform at a, at a high level, right? Through a, right. through a very specific system that's been time tested for like 50 years, right? So how to get up to basically 100 deals a year. Yeah. And I took that system and I kind of put, you know, I, I molded it towards real estate investing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's, that's been the core of our business. That's kind of been, you know, the core of what we teach and it's built on three, three key principles, right? Following a strong, consistent daily schedule, prospecting and tracking your numbers. Yeah. So, so, you know, you brought up an interesting point, you know, you, and, and I had completely forgot about that. I remember our best, our best time, Remember, you know, I was just working Metro Detroit area, but the best month we ever had, we did 18 deals. And I think you, I think you were around during that time. That would've been like right at the same time. Fix and flip, not wholesales. Remember? Yeah, doing actually, yeah, no, I think it might've been like a month or two right before yeah. I met because um, I remember you were right in that transition zone where you were kind of like learning about multifamily and you know how you read your four books. Right. Kind of before you get into something. So uh, yeah, I always kind of, uh, even now I'm kind of like, man, it would've been nice to see Dylan, like, I wish I met you like two years before, you yeah. know, like that when you were in the thick of things, you know, and yeah. just experience that as well. You know, I know, yeah. uh, you know, residential has its own, uh, you know, challenges, but yeah. uh, it has its own rewards too. So, right. Uh, right. Yeah. You, yeah. You came on board as we were trying to build the multifamily portfolio. Exactly. exactly. So, but you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that. And I think that would help a lot of viewers because, you know, you see these photos of people online with these checks. 10,000, 20,000, 40,000. You guys heard the story. The biggest wholesale check I ever got was 400,000. 
from, from a yep. property, right? And it's like, think to yourself, like, is this like, you know, Real? is it legal? And yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> is it legal, right? Yeah, yeah. And by the way, we get that question a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, and I remember back to the time, like, when I was selling real estate, when they said you could do 100 deals a year, remember I was doing four. And I got to tell you, had I not joined a team that was doing that and I could be in the office and see it and feel it and touch it, yeah. I don't yeah. know if I would be where I was at today because I had the same thought like this can't be real. And I yeah, think a lot exactly. of people see this stuff online and it's like, you're mean to tell me I can do three deals our top students done eight deals in 90 days and each deal I'm going to get a $5,000 check or a $20,000 check. Like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so I'm actually happy that you brought that up because I, I remember that now. You, I mean, there's literally like, I've lost checks, like yeah. <laughs> probably a few sitting in a drawer somewhere. Like, you know, that, that. Actually, that was me. That was me, man. That, 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 that was me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you know. But no, I, I say that because like, you know, it's, it's very real, you know, and, it's, and, and that's what happens when you're consistent with yeah. it. So I'm yeah. glad that you brought that up. Yeah. And to just kind of tag on one more point to that, like it comes back to, you know, our, the other thing in our first meeting when you had said, uh, you know, if you want to make uh, a certain amount of income, we yeah. need to surround yourself with people who are making that much. Because like you said, like that belief that, you know, that this is real all the, every day that just kind of you know, you need to like breathe it. You need to feel it. You need to believe it, you know, yeah. because it's going to fuel everything. And, and it's so true. If you put yourself around people who are doing what your goals are, you know, then you'll, 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 you'll match it, you know, and then yeah. as you get to that level, then, you know, you'll go to the next level. So I think a lot of people struggle with this because, and I just, you know, I just had this conversation with somebody the other day, like when you're at home by yourself trying to figure this out and you're not in an environment of people that are prospecting every day, you're not in an environment yeah. of people going after deals every day. Like I can see how it'd be very easy to just get lost and consumed with what oh, yeah. you're lost. Yeah, discouraged. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, what type of advice would you give somebody because you've been in that position, we've all been in that yeah. position. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think the biggest thing for people to understand is if you're not in a high, um, I wouldn't call it a high strung environment, but if you're not in an office or surrounded by people that are doing this every single day and you're at home working on this, yeah, it, it's gotta be very, very difficult, you know, as you're sitting there, cause you know, better than anybody, like you can, it takes, there's a cycle. There's a 90 day cycle that has to occur for most people yeah. building momentum. Yeah. Right. And like most people, nine and a half out of 10 people, that other half a person, right? Yeah. Will stop because they're plugging away, Dylan, you know, I'm making the phone calls every single day and I'm prospecting and I'm not getting results. And it's been like 30 days. Yeah. And nothing's happening. But see, you and I know now. Yeah. What happens like with the interview we just did with Mike and Mark, where they said, hey, listen, we spent 60 days and then it all caught up. And now yeah. we got 20 deals and we don't even know how to process them. Absolutely. But had they quit at day 59, they would have had no deals. And then Absolutely. at day 60, they ended up with literally 20 deals. Exactly. So you have, you have a tremendous amount of experience with that. You've actually helped <clears throat> other people yeah. you know, with that process as well. Like, what advice could you give somebody like, listen, just freaking do the work every day. Yeah. Yeah. Push that boulder up the mountain and momentum is going to catch up with you. Like, how do you get through that? Yeah. Well, I, don't, I mean, <clears throat> if I had to describe it or just explain it to anyone, I, I kind of say like, listen, you have to just understand like the nature of the thing, you know, and I feel like this is very much, even though I know we're talking about real estate, it's like we're talking about real estate, but really it like what we're talking about applies to anything that's worthwhile doing in life. Like if you yeah. want to lose weight, if you want to work out, you know, if, if you do these things consistently, you're not going to see anything just for two weeks. And that's why people always fall off. Yep. Okay. Two and weeks, I didn't get a deal. I'm done. It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks, they've been dieting, whatever. <laughs> get on the scale, and if anything, they weigh more. And they're like, oh, oh, you know, this is whatever. But that's that's actually the way it's supposed to go. You know, as long as you understand that, like, you need to push through 30 days, 60 days, 90 days is really in anything, really. Even when you're learning something, even right. when you know, and I say even just your body. Like, if I'm if. if your body can change at like 90 days from consistently working out. Imagine what like habits can change, you know, what can happen, you know, in different parts of your life. So if people, I guess, understand that this is just a process and, and maybe expect it like when they start, like, Hey, yeah. I'm going 
I'm not going to reduce the intensity. But even if people, you know, they're being negative on the phone, I get hung up on, like, whatever. You know, kind of just like, I'm going to do this 100% for, like, 90 days. And then, yeah, see, and then at that point. 90 days and then decide yeah. if it works or doesn't work. Exactly. And that's why I think it's also important to have, like, that coaching because. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You need to t like to touch base with like a mentor not, and, I'm, and not with someone who's a, I mean, hopefully you're, uh, you know, your mentor will eventually be, become your friend, but it's gotta be like, you don't want to, you don't want to talk to someone who's just going to tell you what you want to hear. Like you need to talk to like, like I said, a teacher, a coach, a mentor who's right. going to talk like, okay, this is what I did. Who's going to hold you accountable. And I remember like when I started couch, like, I'm not really sure how other people, you know, uh, take their approach to coaching, but like. I would remember, like, I'd be like, man, my call with you is like on a Thursday. Yeah. There's a certain amount of work I need to do Monday, Tuesday, what, you know, even like, like, even over the weekend to build up to when I, what did you do this week? Uh, you know, you're going to tell me. So you have to take it very seriously and you have to hold yourself accountable, like in that right. way. So, and I feel like that, that week is perfect because, you know, you'll find out what did I do right? What did I do wrong? And they'll kind of, They'll, they'll tell you minor adjustments. And, and one more thing, Dylan, like what I also learned from coaching is that a lot of times you're doing like 95% um, of everything like accurately, but maybe 5%, and this is unknowingly, you're doing it wrong. Like maybe the tone is wrong. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe you're not pushing through. Like, you know, you'll, you'll, if someone says no, you just kind of accept it at first and you're not pushing through or handling your objections probably. There's that little small 5% tweak where if you make that tweak, that you'll actually see like all of a sudden these, the results will come and you're like, what's going on here? Now? Yeah, that's true. That's another good point you brought up. I mean, it's, it's those small little tweaks that make a difference. You know, exactly. and, and there's no way you can self know that only your coach can see that because they're seeing everything from the totality of, it, you know, I mean, how many times do we get on the phone and it's like, okay, you made an offer. And I said, Hey, Fahad, like literally just say this one word or approach yeah. this person in this fashion. Exactly. You know, the deal was dead and then all of a sudden you're closing on the deal. Yeah, it's true. It's very you know? true. You know? and, and I think another thing, go ahead. No, no, please, my go ahead. I was going to say, I think another thing, and, and you got this, and I'm very happy you did, but I think another thing people don't do today, I don't see it in this business, yeah. is yeah. even now, anytime I go on an appointment or make an offer or presentation, I'm going to take the time to stop, role play, visualize yeah. it in my head. Yeah. I need to practice the offer to the seller, you know, yeah. ahead of making the offer, like try to think, draw out the objections. What is this seller going to say? How are they going to respond? How has the communication yeah. gone so far? Right. Yeah. And I know you and I did a lot of that, right. Yeah. On your deals, you know, and, and, and then, okay, now you're better prepared to make that. Now you stand the best chance of going out there and, and getting a win. Yeah. Right. And so right. tell us about that. If you don't mind your experience in that, I mean, well, I, 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 I mean that's like, if you had 10 deals on the table and if you just show up and you just yeah. like aren't aware of all this stuff and you start acting like your normal self, you'll get one. Yeah. But if you start to become aware of this and you start to practice and role play and do the scripts and sell the personality styles, we're talking yeah. about like going on 10 appointments and getting eight, nine or 10 instead of one. Yeah, like yeah. exactly. <clears throat> exactly. And, and it's interesting you bring that up because I actually like, that's the part of real estate that I actually enjoy, you know, because it was more like the human aspect of it, the cycle. Yeah aspect of it and um you know always kind of like number one in your in your mind kind of thinking okay i'm gonna get this deal done so that's kind of like the first that you gotta have in your back of your mind and then on top of that it's kind of like what are any object like put yourselves in their shoes like what are some of the objections like what objections would you have you know because yeah. especially in investing i mean come on man like you're, you're you're coming up to them and you know you know they want a hundred thousand for the house and i'm i'm like uh forty five thousand you know <laughs> Well, you know, you get, you get ready for some objections, you know? So, um, yeah. and, and it's interesting because like you really get to, you know, understand people's psychology. And, um, and I think what also is exciting about like, real estate, like I said, other than like the reason you can start off with so little and even make, make money in real estate with absolutely no money is because it's like, you have to develop like their skill set. Right. I feel like I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like you can actually develop like what to say you can develop like, you know, how, how you act, how you interact, how you can influence someone. Like that's for man. Like you, all you gotta do is practice. Yeah. And your skills will get better. Once your skills get better, you'll find that like, it's easier to talk to people to be more persuasive. And then that's where like, you'll be closing deal. That's where the magic happens. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and then it's not even like, there comes a point where you're not even really thinking about it, but you're 
from that person. You just kind of like, I know what, what they're going to expect, even anticipate, you know? So in my presentations kind of, and even we talked about kind of dropping seeds. And I know you like, you were like a master at this. And it's interesting because like, I, I felt like I used to do that, like in my life when I'm trying to convince someone, even before real estate, like you always kind of at certain points, you kind of drop little nuggets. And yeah. Seeds. Like dating. Like yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, yeah. You know, basically, you know, you're, you're, you're just kind of, uh, you know, maybe giving them a preview of what to expect. You know, if there's something even that's negative, kind of like throw that in there so that, but not too much, but then, you know, next time when that, when that comes, you're like, oh, remember I mentioned that, you know, but it's fine. You don't have to worry about it. You can pull it out. Yeah, exactly. So you're all, everything is like a conscious thing. And, but I don't want people who are watching this to, you know, be afraid of that and be like, man, how am I going to learn all that? How am I going to, sure. Learn it like like piecemeal, you know, like you learn it like over time and it comes naturally. It's just that you've got to be aware. Of it. Yeah, it comes naturally. And it's, and it's one of those things where like, you know, you show up, you're going to do deals. And, yeah. then you, and then you look at, okay, so you get to a threshold of like, man, I can only do, just by showing up, I can only do one or two deals a month. So how the hell do I get better from there? Yeah. Well, then it's, you work on your skill set. Yeah. Right. And so then that's how you add another two or three deals a month to your thing. And then once your skills and everything's firing all cylinders, then you come to a point you realize, man, I can only do so many deals in this marketplace. I know my skills are on point. My sales skills are on point. I can only extract these. And then you add, okay, another revenue model on top of it. So it's like, okay, I can extract three foreclosures out. Okay. Now I want to do more deals. I got these. Now I throw in probates. Ah, there we go. I can extract one or two out of probates. Yeah. Then I throw in, you know, absentees. Ah, absentees is another one. Until you get exactly. to 10 to 15 deals a month, like, like we were doing, right? Yeah, yeah. And then and you, you know, realize, no matter what you do, no matter how good your skills are, I can't get any more out of this marketplace. So then you add yeah. another marketplace on. Yeah, yeah. Right? But yeah, it, it, it's baby steps, you know? It's kind of like, uh, another mistake I think maybe novices do is kind of like try to do everything at once, you know? Yeah, and yeah. They, you know, then they, you know, it's not working for a month and they just give up, you know, it's kind of like, no, that's like that. Why don't you just start off like one or two things and try to master them. And once you've mastered those, let's master the next thing, you know? I got to tell you, it's the biggest challenge I face as a coach is, you know, people, first of all, very few people follow it a hundred percent. People yeah. like you that follow a percent, Mike and Mark and in India, who we interviewed, you can follow a hundred percent, you get the results. Yeah. But like, it's such a rarity. And I just tell people, just stop. You don't even have to think. We've done the yeah. thing for you. Just follow it 100%. You know, but then it's like they don't follow it 100%, and then, they, and, then, and then they're not used to it because if you've never – remember, you can't you, – you, you know, it takes a little bit me, – me and you are unique people in the sense like, you know, we get punched in the face and we say, thank you, sir, can I have another, right? Like we're a little – please, yeah. keep feeding me, yeah. right? It's funny, yeah. It's kind of like <laughs> – Versus at us or whatever, like, yeah, objection. We're just kind of like, all right, it's funny. A lot of people have never been in that scenario. I've always worked for myself. You've always worked for yourself, yeah. think, right? For the most part, you've always had to fend for yourself. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it's like, okay, so now take somebody that hasn't done that. Yeah. And they don't know what it takes to survive and fend for yourself. And they've never been in an environment of having to build momentum, never right. had an environment of, God, I have to get hung up on a hundred times, but I know yeah. that it's going to work if I just take action every day. Right. And so people right. stop short of the result. It's like that, that thing of three feet from the goal. Sure. And it's literally like Mark and Mike. Yeah. If they had stopped at day 59, there yeah. were no deals. Yeah, exactly. The next day, there were 20 deals. Yeah. Right? And so it's like, how do, how do you get that into somebody's mind of like, listen, like, Trust the system, trust the process, just don't yeah. give up because you are like an exception to the rule not giving up. You're a little like crazy like me, right? Well, um, <laughs> you just don't yeah, ever give up. Yeah, don't ever. But you know, I guess I would say um, to people if I, if I was, uh, you know, it's, it's a newbie, kind of like, okay, this is what's required. Kind of list these things out. Like for example, prospecting. You know, some people don't like to do it. Some people don't like to, you know, and then kind of maybe like have them check off like what they're okay with. You know, in, in an honest space when they're just, and there's no judgment, you know, it's just, you're just yeah. here for yourself. So what in these things can they see being a challenge for them? Like, let's say, or even like making, you know, making the offer and then not saying anything and then yeah. it's silence and it's just uncomfortable, you know? I would say find out what those three, four, five, whatever, 10 things are uh, that make you feel uncomfortable right. and just get on, like, like become comfortable 
being uncomfortable. Does that make any sense? So yeah. like, um, yeah. just kind of be in that thing. And then eventually you won't even, you're, you'll stop feeling uncomfortable. About it. You well, know, just, yeah. One thing that was ingrained, that's a good point. One thing that was ingrained in my mind, and you know, this at a very young age was, fall in love with being uncomfortable because it's the uncomfortable that causes the growth. Exactly. If you were never uncomfortable, you wouldn't grow. If you didn't feel exactly. like shit and have to move away from pain because the situation in life sucks, exactly. you're not going to do anything to get out of it. Yeah. yeah. And so you have to train your mind. And we talk about this in the course, right? We have a whole section on mindset, but you have to train your mind on falling in love. Like I seriously, and I know you do too. Like when you're uncomfortable, I'm like, yes, please yeah. give me more pain and suffering. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, how many situations have we been in? Yeah, like meetings that, yeah. Where, how many situations have we been in? In meetings where the guys, like, we don't know what he's talking about. You know, look at each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, not that I'm assuming to fake it, but you, you, you kind of, you know, you're going to figure it out. Everything's yeah. fine. You know, to just relax and, you know. Yeah. And do it. You know? And you don't need to have an answer on the spot either. I think people get hesitant. What do I say? What do I do? Like, it's okay to say, I don't know, or I don't understand. Exactly. And you know, it's, okay. <laughs> and I, I remember this was kind of a hangup. I remember I had like maybe like two or three months into it. Like, um, <clears throat> I was starting on the foreclosures and I, cause there was a limited amount of, um, because we were building the list again, there was a limited amount of, uh, you know, uh, prospects on that, on that sheet. And so, like if there's like 20 I, I, in my mind, I was kind of like, man, like each 20 of those counts, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to yeah. overthinking it. And I remember you were like, dude, you can't, you can't mess it up. And I was like, something clicked. I was like, all right, like I can't mess this up. Like there's no way I can mess this up. Yeah. It kind of gave me the freedom to be like, to totally mess up. And, and yeah. I didn't mess up, you know, <laughs> just like whatever, like, you know, whatever happens is going to happen. So, so my coach always used to tell me plan to fail. Yeah. because then you're not surprised when it happens yeah. because it's got to happen, you know? Yeah. And so like me, when I prospect and I know, you know, this as well too, like, or door knock. Yeah. I plan, I literally plan the first three to five phone calls yeah. are going to just suck. Yeah. Like I'm going to screw them up. The person's going to just, it's just going to be a bomb. And then yeah. guess what? <clears throat> you know, the next call after that, you're like, you're fine. Anybody, by the way. Yeah, and, and, and it's important to, to understand like, yeah. I just come down to like, I just the truth of the situation. Like, what is, what are we so worried about? Like we pick up the phone, we're calling someone who we have no idea. And let's say that they're rude on the other side. They have no idea. In us, it's all like the center of our world. Oh my gosh, I was rejected and they hung up. And they don't want to do a deal with me. They have no idea who you are. They, they're not going to remember you once they hang up. Yeah, they're, they're not thinking about you. They have their own problem, you know? So number one, don't if that happens don't linger on it because you're very insignificant like what you're making to be like a significant thing is yeah. so significant you know so like understand that you know and that actually makes it more comfortable like it's totally fine like remember Dylan like, we called like so many people I keep calling I keep calling and then you know they they're like no you know they'll figure it out as far as the four they have six months you know to re redeem their house and they're like no we're gonna figure it out and I was like you know you have to figure it out soon because you you know once you come like a month or two before redemption date you're not gonna I'm not gonna be able to help you and then lo and behold after you know me calling them so many times even after people have cursed at me even if people have rejected me I you know I, I annotate everything they call me they call us and <laughs> right hey, do you think you can help us and they wouldn't even remember that like we even had a conversation yeah yeah it comes to my point like people they're not you know the you know the people who are you know in these situations uh, like you talk about you know the destitute, death, and, and divorce, these motivated sellers are in such situations where they're not even really fully there when they're talking to you or, what, or, or whatever they're, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, being mean to you or you're being rejected. So don't even worry about it. Yeah. Just stay, call them, call them two hours later. It's fine. You know, whatever. Like if, if you know, and, and that's happened before. We've called people literally, remember like, I, I think you called someone like half an hour after someone was totally upset and they didn't even realize it was you. Right. And they, up being like okay you know we set a walk through yeah i tell people that all the time they hang up on you tell you to f off don't ever call me again all right we'll call you back in an hour <laughs> and, and, and you know what it's also in it, and people are like and people might be thinking well i don't have the personality to do that if you kind of think of it like and it's what you said like if you're just thinking of it like no i need to like i can actually help this person right. and i can put them in a situation where everybody's going to be better off yeah you kind of think of it like that that it's kind of like you know, they may be mean, they may be, but once you get through, they're going to understand that, like, you're just trying to help them, you know, and then they're better off doing a deal with you than with someone else. 
Well, and that's a good point. You know, we, and we teach and, 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 and we try to instill this in everybody. I literally have it. I'll show you right now on my phone. I've had this probably on my phone for like seven years. Yeah. Can you read that? How can I help, can I help the client? What's most important to them? Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Right? Mm -hmm. And I don't remember the point I was going to make in that. No, I think, I think your point was that like, if you just keep that to heart, then, you know, you're not going to be afraid or nervous. Yeah. About, you know, yeah. you know, that's the thing. And it's like, and we try to instill this in people's minds because I just had a conversation with a close coaching client last week where I just listened to his tonality. And he said, I can't make them realize that their house isn't worth what they think it's worth. And it's like, listen, yeah. like you're approaching it entirely wrong. You're not there to make anybody realize anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> You've got to take yourself out of the equation and listen to their needs. And, yeah. and can we help them or can we not help them? And yeah. both scenarios are completely fine. Yeah. People get attached to the deal. God, I have to force this down their throat because I haven't gotten a deal. It's my only one. And if this doesn't yeah. close, then I'm screwed. I can't pay the bills this month. Right? And, yeah. and, I, and you end up strangling the life out of the deal. Yeah, yeah. Where you that have to be completely is, detached. It, it's, you have by the to. way, here's a service that we can offer. Here's the benefits. Here's the disadvantages. Here's the benefits and disadvantages of going on the market instead of working with an investor like me. Yeah. And, and, and which one makes most sense to you? I don't care which one you decide either way. And, yeah. and Fahad, you know this. I can tell you hands down, I've gotten exponentially more deals from yeah. being completely detached from the outcome yeah. Yeah. than being attached to it. And I know you have as well too. Yeah, and we've talked about that because there's something that comes across, even though you consciously don't try to do it, there's something that, that, right. that desperation comes out in your tone or something, you know, that- yeah. Desperate. Sense, you know, and then they just kind of try to push away. But when you're really kind of like, you know, I'm really here just to help you. I think we'd be able to figure something out. This is the value we can provide to you. And yeah. not like you said, like, we'd always like, Talk about, you know, starting every day at zero. Like you should have yeah. you just kind of, if you have, if your mind is busy with like other, other prospects, other leads, then you won't strangle the life out of this. Yeah. You know, that one thing that you have. And then, and then, you know, you, you will automatically start becoming more comfortable, more laid back, more uh, approachable. Like even in your, you know, dialogue with, with these prospects where they'll be like, okay, well, you know, this person, they're not trying to shove anything down my throat. I think, I think the best skill I ever learned very young and Mike Ferry taught me this mm. was to be complete, whether you have like, you know, negative money in the bank account or a yeah. million dollars in your bank account to never be attached to the deal yeah. in, in any situation. Yeah. Because it's, you know, you, you mentioned what comes out of you. Well, yeah. just that me, 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 which is disgusting. Yeah. Nobody yeah. gives a crap about you. The homeowner has a problem. Yeah. They're only thinking about me. Everybody's only thinking yeah. about me. Yeah. And so, and so, you know, you have to focus on how can I help you? That's it at the end of the day. And, and by the way, I may be able to, and I may not be able to. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I want you to know I'm fully committed to helping you. And here's all the options that are available to you. And I'd love the opportunity to be able to help you through this process. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I might not be the best one too. I don't know. Yeah. Right? But let's, let's figure it out together. And it's like, you know, it's such a better approach, man. Um, it is, and, and you know, and think about even psychologically, like if someone's being abrasive or is being very difficult to, if you kind of approach them like that, yeah, it's going to calm them down. You know, you're not like, if they're talking louder, you're trying to talk even louder on top of them, you know, it becomes into this like, def or you're becoming defensive about what your intentions are. It's like if you approach them the way you did, like, like you just said, you know, it'll calm them down and then they'll be open to listening to what you have. When it goes a little bit deeper than that, because humans from a psychological standpoint or emotional creatures. Yeah. You know, I'm an analytical. I tend to have yeah. like very low emotions, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for, for the most part, you know, we're, we're emotional. And so we let our emotions drive us and drive our decisions. Mm -hmm. By the way, on both sides of the table. Yeah. And so, so as a newbie in investing, you're emotional because you're probably broke. Yeah. You don't have a lot of money to start with. You might've just invested some money and the bills are coming. I got to get paid. Very yeah. emotional, turbulence. Experience. Yeah. You have yeah. to stay calm and cool. It's like a yeah. pilot in a storm. If an engine's out and he starts freaking out and getting emotional, yeah. we're all going to die. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, and it, keeps, it keeps coming back, Dylan. I mean, 
I hate to be, like be, but it's so important. Like it comes back to the coaching, like because that way anything that happens in your week, you can always go back and be like, okay, well, let me touch base. You know, I had a question about this, and it really anchors you. That's like that is the intrinsic value of you know coaching. I, I really think that and it's something that I, I, I like, something that's available where you know in, in this point in time we're very lucky to have all these resources. You know and all these things i mean man if i had this like you know when i was in college or you know later this is like there's so many resources out there and you, all you have to do is just like take advantage of it. you know people are there to help you so there's an abundance of resources out there and quite yeah. frankly i've had people watch our youtube videos and build successful businesses just from yeah. our youtube videos i can see that yeah and it's because they're just willing to take action you know yeah. absolutely so Fahada, I appreciate, man. This I think it's been an awesome conversation. Oh, yeah. Lots of knowledge being spit here. Tell me a little bit about, you know, as we wrap this up, you know, I know that you 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 graduated very quickly as well into the multifamily space. You you did the yeah. residential. But tell me a little bit about when you were doing the residential stuff, you know, you did it what, like six months or something like that. And then you yeah. went into the multifamily. But yeah. how many deals did you do in that time frame? Okay, so from July 2017 to December 20, the end of December 2017, um, did eight deals. Eight deals. Eight, eight wholesale deals. Yeah. yeah, wholesale deals. And what was your average wholesale fee? Um, well, I would say, well, because you and me had our own uh, agreement, each of my deals, you know, I'd get like 25. Gross. Yeah, because Fahad, you started with me in coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Exactly. And, and actually, and I want to actually bring that up too. You know what? A lot of times when people, um, like it's all about thinking creatively, like if everyone has their challenges, like even I remember when I sat with you and, you know, I had a certain amount of money that I had for like marketing and things like that and getting my real estate license because I wanted the MLS access to that to be able to comp, yeah. you know, I, I was short on money, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, people are out there to, if, if you can provide value for them, that uh, they'll, uh, you know, they'll create deals where, you know, you can, you can make out, you know, just fine, even if you don't have money. So I guess my point is, if you're up against, uh, you know, some kind of challenge, you know, talk to people to see if, hey, is there something that you can work out? And if you're able to find deals, you'll be able to find people. Who are oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, I would say like the average, um, I mean, it was all over the place, but our average total wholesale check was, I think, between five and six. About five to six thousand. You're yeah, in the Michigan totally. market, yeah. and then you got a bit. I think you got a big check once, didn't you? Like fifteen grand, twenty grand, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, uh, it was. Close, it was. I think. Uh, I think it was like fourteen thousand, and uh, and that was just like my cut. That deal, you know, for everything, you know, I think we made something like close to like thirty three thousand. Yeah, you know? and that was a wholesale, right? That was wholesale, you know, and that's. Yeah. It, that had enough after we made that it had enough meat on the bones you know for the investor for the investor as well absolutely <laughs> it was awesome yeah. was that was that the deal blake did was that the deal blake did a couple with us so i, I believe it, Blake's on one of the buyers yeah 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 that's incredible man yeah yeah so uh um, so fahad man very grateful for you and yeah. I wanna, you know i want to try to convince you at some point to get involved in what we're doing here with life by designs and the coaching and stuff. So maybe though I'm watching, well. Fahad is being very reserved. He's a wealth of knowledge <laughs> and he has uh, uh, been a very good friend, uh, very good student. And um, you know, I'd love to have you participate with us in some fashion, hopefully down the road. Um, I know yeah. you're doing your own thing right now, but yeah, uh, you know, if you could, I, I, Dylan, I, I also just want to thank you, man. It's, it's, uh, you know, I mean, I happen to call you a friend now, but you know, just kind of even that relationship uh, we have, it's, I very much look at you as like, like a business mentor, you know, and, and like the amount of stuff, like you said, from the very first day, put your, put yourself around people who are successful. And it's like, not only in real estate, but like all the stuff that I learned from you, as far as like saving, you know, taxes, uh, yeah. law, law, just things, just being around you, the stuff that you absorb. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate you, man. So I, I definitely look forward to uh, you know working together in, in, in the future. You know, I appreciate it, man. You want to leave anybody with one final piece of advice? I would say if you're um, seriously uh, wondering about getting into real estate, I would say definitely um, get on this program. And I would also say um, Dylan is definitely somebody that uh, you know is um, who can mentor you to, to meet your goals. And the final thing is if you have any doubt about yourself 
or if you can do it, the answer is yes, you can do it. Yeah. To do is find the right, uh, you know, the right vehicle to get you to where you want to get. And I think uh, New York is a uh, absolute perfect place. Awesome, man. Well, thank you, brother. So okay. I will catch up with you, man. Sounds good, man. Take it All easy. Right. Talk to you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.